when it's time to start and uh I know everybody has other things they need to do also to get ready for tomorrow, so we'll get started here. Thank you for being here tonight. I know we have a small crowd, but you're good to be here, and uh, hope you all have a wonderful day tomorrow as well. Let's, close, let's start with a prayer, and then we'll have, we're going to have some songs. Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for the blessings that you give us. We're thankful for this congregation. We ask that you bless each one of us as we strive to be a light in this community. We're thankful for uh, the country that we live in. We're, we're very blessed to be living in a country where we have the freedoms that we do. And uh, and we when we assemble tomorrow with our families, we ask you to help us to remember that, that we are so blessed. And there's many in this world that are not nearly as fortunate as we are. And just keep that in mind. We have a number of people we'd like to pray for this evening that uh, have requested our prayers. Uh, we ask that you continue to be with our country, especially in, with our newly elected officials, that the transition will be smooth and things will go well there. Give the, the new leaders and the, and the old leaders as well the wisdom and discernment as they lead our country, that they will use the discernment that they have to uh, be morally right and follow your guide. We ask a special blessing on Laura Hinton and her family in the passing of her father. We ask a blessing on these people that are in the hospital, Chandra Ed Evans, and these that are recuperating, Annie Chilson and Gary Clark, Lida Cole and Jean Kuba, Christy Folks, Blas Gomez, Mon Monty Green, Colin and Nina Hammond, Margie Harrell, Al Hastings, Jim Hummel, Jerry and Pam Jones, Carol Lightfoot, Rick Ludwig, Kathy Parker, Ronnie Reinhardt and family, Diana Salinas, Jonathan Sanford, Rocky Smith, Wall Wallace Stewart, Nancy Stover and family, Edwina Thompson, Carol Wade, Kevin Watson, and Debbie Webb. We also ask that you be with our homebound members, Trudy Bustamante, Bustamante Norma Carter, Norman and Tiana Cox, <clears throat> Clinton Judy Croft, Cheryl and Don Davis, Gloria Dennis, Ed and Sherry Green, Jean and Ellen Haas, Barbara Hodges, Leslie Hoffman, Heather Hudson, Johnny Kylers, Loretta McKaig, Shirley Norris, Connie Pope, Billy Preston, Sylvia Rodriguez, Mary Sewell, David Smith, and Bob and Charlene, Bob and Charlene Dwork. Also be with our uh, other homebound members that requested our prayers as well. Now continue with us this evening as we go through this period of worship that we will honor you and glorify you with all of our hearts. Bless the the men that are going to be speakers in their scriptures and bless them as they present their messages. I'll continue with this and please forgive us when we fail you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand for our first hymn. Can I ask a, ask a favor? Why don't we all move this way since we're not, since there's so few of us and we're all spread out? Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. Praise him, angels in the heights. Sun and moon rejoice before him. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Hallelujah, amen. 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 Praise the Lord, for he has spoken. Worlds in his mighty voice obey. Laws never shall be broken. For their guidance he hath made. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, for he is glorious. Never shall his promise fail. God hath made his saints victorious. Sin and death shall not prevail. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 
Praise the God of our salvation, host on high his power proclaim, heaven and earth and all creation, laud and magnify his name. Hallelujah, amen, amen, amen. You see the place? Hallelujah, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, all his angels praise proclaim. All his hosts together praise him, sun and moon and stars on high. Praise him, O ye heaven of heavens, and ye floods above the sky. Let them praise his gift, Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And this glory is exalted, and this glory is exalted, and this glory is exalted for above the earth and sky. Let them praise his gift, Jehovah, they were made at his command. Them forever he established, his decree shall ever stand. From the earth, O oh, praise Jehovah, all ye floods, ye dragons all. Fire and hail and snow and vapors, stormy winds that hear him call. Let them praise his gift, Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And this glory is exalted, and this glory is exalted, and this glory is exalted for above the earth and sky. All ye fruitful trees and cedars, all ye hills and the mountains high, creeping things and beasts and cattle, birds set in the heavens fly, kings of earth and all ye people, princes greater judges all. Praise his name, young men and maidens, aged men and children small. Let them praise his gift, Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And this glory is exalted, and this glory is exalted, and this glory is exalted. For above the earth and sky. Happy Thanksgiving Eve to everybody. I'm glad to know that everybody got everything cooked and prepared and ready to go with nothing to do when you get home but rest. That's good. That's good. Let me invite you, please, to take your Bibles or your Bible app and turn to Psalms number 138. Psalms 138. Whenever you look at this particular psalm and you read it in your Bibles, if you have the ESV or you got the NIV, it starts out by saying, O David, or of David, excuse me. The New American Standard, uh, New King James, starts out with a psalm of David. Now, the scholars, they're kind of divided here about who is the writer of this particular psalm. Some said it was David. And they cite verse 7 as a common theme written by David. Uh, others says that the psalm was written after David had passed away. Maybe even while that the Israelites was exiled into Babylon. Or either that or whenever they had returned 70 years later. But either way, the psalm is inspired by the Holy Spirit and deserves our study. And it's one of my favorite uh, chapters of the Bible when it comes this time of year. In verse 1, I have it entitled in my Bible, Give Thanks Wholeheartedly. Let's look at thirty-one uh, 138 verse 1. Bible says, I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. 
before the gods I sing your praise. Now, the psalmist began by simply telling the Lord that he's given thanks to the Lord with all of his heart. The word here that's used for God is the word Elohim. Now, whenever you look at that word, occasionally that word could refer to as angels. If you look at Job 1 and verse 6. Elsewhere, whenever you look at Elohim, it, it can be kings or it can be rulers, like in Psalms 82, 6. But think about the very last time that you really poured your heart out and thanking the Lord out loud with your whole being without caring who was around or who could hear you. You did not hold back but passionately proclaim your thanks to the Lord without reservation or without regrets. That's what the psalmist says that he's doing here in verse 1. In verses 2 and 3 in my Bible, I have it entitled, Give Thanks for the Lord's Steadfast Love and Faithfulness. Let's read this. I bow down towards your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. You know, the psalmist says he bowed down towards the Lord's holy temple. We know from 1 Kings chapter 8 that bowing down towards the temple is a call for repentance. You can see that ideal all the way through the rest of verse 2. The psalmist is thanking the Lord for his steadfast love and his thankfulness. And that the Lord forgives the sins that leads us into salvation. Do you know why that the Lord increases the strength of your soul and answers you whenever you call him? Because, folks, that's who God is. That's his very nature. That is exactly what he does. Verses 4 through 6, I say, call for the people to give thanks. That's my title that I have in my Bible. Call for the people to give thanks. Let's look at this. In verse 4, it says, All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he knows from afar. Now the psalmist turns and calls for the rulers of the earth to give thanks to the Lord. Well, remember that the text was originally written in the Hebrew language. So when you translate that from Hebrew into English, this can be read basically one of two different ways. It can be read one way, the psalmist is saying that the king of the earth will one day bow down and give thanks to the Lord, which we know is possible because of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10. Bible tells us that. The other way that we can look at it, that the psalmist is calling on all the kings of the earth to give thanks to the Lord. Well, either way, I believe if you look at verse 6, and if you read it, it is a call, but it's a call not only for the king, but it's a call for us as his people to give thanks to the Lord. They need to hear the decree of the Lord and give thanks for it. They need to sing about the greatness of the Lord. And give thanks for it. Notice why even the kings of the earth must do this. Because it says the reason is the Lord is high. And he is exalted. And he looks kindly upon the lowly. He brings the lowly near to him. But the arrogant and the haughty. He knows them from afar. God keeps his distance from the proud folks. Though the Lord is great. And he cares for the humble. In verse 7, I, in, I, I title this in my Bible, Give Thanks for Our Lives. Give Thanks for Our Lives. Verse 7 says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand deliver me. Now, even in the midst of the troubles we face and the sins we commit, folks, God has preserved our life to this day. God has delivered us. God's unfailing love is always there for us. We're able to walk confidently into the future because the Lord will remain with us 
even to the very end. God is for us. And that's something that we don't think about a lot. We think that maybe God is up on his throne and every time we do something wrong, he's right. No, God is for us. He is, he is our, he is our cheering committee, we should say. Sometimes we do not think of life this way, folks. Sometimes we fail to realize that the reason we live is by the power and by the word of God. Folks, nothing is outside of God's control. And no one is outside of God's control. We need to thank God that we're even alive today because he has something for us to do. In verse 8, I entitled that one, Give Thanks Because God Accomplishes His Purpose in Us. The Bible says, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Folks, finally, the psalmist gives thanks to the Lord because the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. God's going to do his will. If we allow him to, the Lord will accomplish his purpose and through us. We are a part of God's plan and are to be his instruments that work in the kingdom. Our prayer is, to the Lord should be for him to make us a servant. Use us, Father. We should be asking the Lord to make me the work of his hands. And when he does what we ask him to do, and he does make us the work of his hands, we should give him praise. We should be grateful that he has answered our prayers. Again, if we allow him to, God will change us so that we can be useful servants to him. Folks, we are called to present ourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and to present our bodies as instrument of righteousness. That was Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. So let me bring this to a conclusion. Folks, we have so many reasons, especially this time of year when we stop, to start thinking about how we can be thankful. Look beyond all the rich physical blessings we have received. Look beyond the pleasures of life. And think about how much God has done for each and every single one of us. Give thanks to the Lord wholeheartedly for his faithfulness to us. Also, give thanks for his steadfast love. He, it's, he's there in our trials. He's there in our suffering. And folks, even more important than that, he has forgiven us of our sins and has provided us a way of salvation through Jesus Christ, his son. And folks, if for nothing else, just knowing that there is a plan of salvation that I can be saved for eternity through Jesus Christ, that in itself should give us thanks. You go to God in prayer with me. Father, thank you so much for every single thing that you do for us. Father, you're always at work in our lives. I pray, Father, that we will allow you to be your instruments. Father, there are people around about us that are lost. People around about us, Father, that if they drew their last breath tonight, they would have no hope. And I pray, Father, that would burden our heart. Father, I pray that our actions, not only to the outside, but to the inside, would always be that of bringing you glory and you honor, Father. And that you would use us in the kingdom, Father. Whether we might be used small or whether we might be used large, it doesn't matter as long as you will use us and we allow that to happen and i pray father that tomorrow as we stop to give thanks we will give thanks to you wholeheartedly for everything that you've done and we ask all this in jesus holy and righteous name amen
majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be our glory, power, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his own, his anthem praise. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Jesus, magnify, come glorify, Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship His majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify, Christ Jesus the King. Majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord will praise his name forever. Will praise his name forever. Will praise his name forever. Christ the Lord will give him all the glory. Will give him all the glory. We'll give him all the glory, Christ the Lord, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, Christ the Lord. Good to see everybody. I chose a passage tonight on the, out of Matthew 7. Uh, there's, the other day I was hearing that there's hundreds of professed religions in the world. That saddens me. Because they can't be that many right. I chose a passage today out of uh, Matthew 7. Verse 21, <clears throat> not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy <clears throat> in your name? And in your name, drive out demons. And in your name, perform many miracles. Then I will say to them, plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. I think that's the saddest passage there is in the Bible. Because if, if you have got to believe what is written in this book instead of everybody else's opinion, it's, it's sad that uh, we've got so many divisions in the world. I don't know how we're going to get 
passes, it's not up to us. God's the judge, and he will determine who's going. That'd be sad, though, to see this here in that time for God to say, I never knew you. I would Had some other passes. I ain't going to get through them. I can't improve on it. Let us pray. Father, we thank for this word that we have to go by. We pray that thou bless us. We may study thy word and be in harmony with thy word and do thy will and be acceptable in the last day. Guide us, watch over, and forgive us. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Come, Christians, join to sing. Alleluia, amen. Loud praise to Christ our King. Alleluia, amen. Let all with heart and voice he for his throne rejoice. Praise is his gracious choice. Alleluia, amen. Come, lift your hearts on high. Alleluia, amen. Let praises fill the sky. Alleluia, amen. He is our guide and friend. To us he'll condescend. His love shall never end. Alleluia, amen. Praise yet our Christ again. Alleluia, amen. Lies shall not end the strain. Alleluia, amen. On heaven's blissful shore, his goodness we'll adore, singing forevermore. Alleluia, amen. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. Praise him, all ye people. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise him, all ye people. For his merciful kindness is great toward us, is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever, forever and ever, ever and ever. Praise ye the Lord. Well, I had to um looking at the uh, thanksgiving and thanks the thanks that we should be given to the lord <clears throat> once i started looking and look at this i've, I've found four reasons i want to uh, comment on uh, but first i'd like to go ahead and read uh, psalms 10 104 if you turn there <clears throat> Enter the gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever and his faithfulness continues through all generations. <clears throat> As I was looking at the uh, lesson tonight that I wanted to portray is, I wanted to, it's uh, until you start looking at this, you realize the Bible especially the New Testament, is, is full of reasons why we should be thankful and thankful to God. Uh, 
four comments I want to make about God wants to be thanked. He wants to be thanked. Number two, everything is from God. Number three is a lack of thanksgiving keeps us from moving forward. And four, giving thanks changes our perspective. I'd like to uh, look at the first one here is God wants to be thanksgiving. Paul was one of the most prolific writers in the, he wrote about half the New Testament, but uh, as you st study those uh, books that Paul wrote, he was a thankful to God, and he pro portrayed that in his, uh, usually about his opening in each book. Uh, he understood, and he started out with all these letters just about thinking uh, uh, in first in Thessalonians, Colossians one three. He says, we always thank God, the Father of Lord Jesus, when we pray for you. He thanks God. So if you look at that, we look at it, it's un, uh, and so you, start, you realize it. That is our goal as we're following God is to be thankful for his presence. Um, as we look at... Uh, First Thessalonians, Paul writes, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. You know, the Lord wants us to be thanked. Uh, he wants to be thanked uh, for his providence and for his sovereignty. Jesus wants to be thanked also for taking our sins and making us clean. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, wants to be thanked for his guidance and comfort. God's um, wants our praise, and he's worthy and deserves it. Number two, everything is, is from God. Look in 1 Corinthians 1 through 4. Uh, he's always give, always thank my God for you, Paul is saying. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking, in all your knowledge. There is not a single thing we own. We hear that many times. Not a single thing about us that uh, has been given to us from the tiniest detail of it, from our appearance of our house that we live in, even the greatest Offerings and sacrifice, we can't outgive God. So the things that we have, God is behind it. We need to understand that God needs our thanksgiving. Number three is the lack of thanksgiving keep, keep us from moving forward. Look in the Old Testament as the Israelites was coming out in uh, a bondage and captivity what did what happened to them and this is a good lesson to for us to look at you know god led his people out of Egypt towards the promised land and what happened they started complaining they started murmuring they started uh feeling sorry for themselves and what did god do he didn't he did not uh uh Give them very good grades, did he? What happened? They were going to the promised land, but how long did it take them to get there? Forty years. So us not being thankful to God can prolong our uh, blessings from God. So we need to watch our gumbling, gumbling and, uh, and we need to praise God. Number, number four, we, give, uh, we need to give thanks for, uh, to him in our prayers and our focus always from ourselves and to the goodness of God and all he has done for us. Our hearts are 
stirred with joy, then joy begins to overflow with the results of the fruit. <clears throat> Growing to be more like Jesus is our goal that we should be striving for. So the order of thanksgiving is what? Be consistent, be steadfast, genuine, do it year round, not just tomorrow, but uh, we need to do it all in our life and all the things that uh, we come in contact with is to is, uh, thank God. I'm thankful that uh, we're here tonight and I'm thankful for tomorrow and the days to come. And I pray that uh, as we uh, leave tonight that we'll be thinking of uh, how we need to thank God more than we do. Uh, we need to continually thank Him. Thank you for the being here tonight, and let's begin with a prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this night, and we're thankful for those that are gathered here. We pray that you'll be with this church. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll be uh, blessing uh, waters as we uh, continue to serve this community, and we pray, Heavenly Father, that we will um, always give you thanks, understand that uh, that you are our God, and that we do those things that will honor you and your Son and the Holy Spirit. We pray that you be with us. Be with us not only to the Lord, but help us every day to give you thanks for our being, give you thanks for the promise that uh, is promised to us. We're thankful for Jesus coming, and we pray, my Father, that uh, we'll always be thankful for all the blessings that you bestow upon us. We remind remind ourselves to daily ask for your blessings, and it will increase and it'll help our lives to be more serving to you. We pray that you'll watch over us, be with us throughout these days, be with our country, and be with uh, be with us all to support uh, the word and the to support the things that we are doing throughout the world through this congregation. We pray, Heavenly Father, and we're thankful for all the blessings that you've bestowed on us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I am fixed upon it out of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my heaven deezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. O oh, to grace, greater debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it, Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it, Seal it for thy courts above. When I came in this evening and to check the PowerPoint, and that song had different words than we're accustomed to. <laughs> so I had to look at it while we were singing. <laughs> mm -hmm.
Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through days of toil when hearts doth fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fish your path assail, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. All you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every day or all the way, he will take care of you. God will take care of you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here, taking a time out from what for all of us is a very busy week. Um, and to really focus your attention not just on being thankful, but focusing on what the Lord's perfect word has for us. Now, I gave uh, Charles the wrong scripture citation. It should be Second Samuel chapter 7. I'm sorry about that. First, second, you know, whatever. <laughs> second Samuel 7. There you go. And so take your Bibles out. We're going to be starting uh, looking at some verses in the middle of this chapter in just a moment. But as we uh, often say, context is king. Very, very important to appreciate the depth of David's words that we're going to be reading in this passage. So, first of all, I need to realize that uh, by the time we get to this seventh chapter of Second Samuel, David has been fully anointed as king. God has been extraordinarily favorable. He's given uh, David so many successes, so much of his favor and his blessings. Uh, it's just really amazing to account all the things that has gone on in David's life since the time he was anointed king until the time we get to his prayer in 2 Samuel chapter 7. He has uh, defeated the Jebusites. Ran, he ran them out of, of Jerusalem. They had been there for centuries. And finally, David was given the victory over the Jebusites, runs them out of town. He moves in, takes up residence there. He builds himself a palace. Um, he brings the Ark of the Covenant back into, or brings it into Jerusalem with great excitement. We remember the stories about that. I would love to have been there for that parade, quite frankly. That would have been an amazing thing uh, to see. But then, most impressively, God has told David just before this that he is going to make his name great. He's going to make his name as great as the greatest men on, on the planet. And to culminate all of that, the cherry on top of all these blessings is that he is telling David that his throne is not simply going to last forever, but that it's going to culminate in the coming of the Messiah on that throne. And so as we come to this passage, we read some fascinating words from David. We're going to start in verse 18 and uh, read a few verses here. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord. And he said, Who am I, sovereign Lord, and what is my family, that you have brought me this far? And as if this were not enough in your sight, sovereign Lord, you have also spoken about the future of the house of your servant. And this decree, sovereign Lord, is for a mere human. 
What more can David say to you? For you know your servant, sovereign Lord, for the sake of your word and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. How great you are, sovereign Lord. There is none like you and there is no God but you as we have heard with our own ears. And then skipping down to verse 27. Lord Almighty, God of Israel, you have revealed this to your servant saying, I will build a house for you. So your servant has found courage to pray this prayer. Sovereign Lord, you are God. Your covenant is trustworthy, and you have promised these good things to your servant. Now be pleased to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever in your sight. For you, Sovereign Lord, have spoken, and with your blessing, the house of your servant will be blessed forever. Now, you may have noticed with the subject this evening, there is... There's a word that is conspicuous in its absence in the verses that we just read. And that word is thankfulness. Thankfulness or any version of that word does not show up in David's prayer to the Lord. Yet, it doesn't take a biblical scholar to recognize that every one of these sentences that David has uttered to his sovereign Lord is absolutely is saturated with thankfulness. This man is on top of the world, isn't he? Everything he could imagine going right has gone right, and then so. He still has the humility to pay the respect to give the thank, his thankfulness to the one who made it all possible. That's a pattern of David, isn't it? You don't have, have to read many of his psalms or prayers that are uh, included in other parts of Scripture to recognize that he absolutely focused attention on the Lord as being the source of all of the good things that he enjoyed. And he recognized that God was also the source of rescuing him from any number of predicaments in which he found himself. Well, as sort of a... An opposite of this, if we go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, there are some very familiar words from God to his nation Israel, his relatively new but struggling nation of Israel. And these are going to be kind of a counterpoint in attitude to what uh, David has offered to God. You read these verses in, in verses, uh, these words in verses 10 through 12 of Deuteronomy 6. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large, flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Well, unfortunately, we know that the Israelites did exactly the opposite of what God warned them against. And it's not just once. We recognize that the nation of Israel was aptly named because they struggled with God routinely. Now, their lack of an attitude of thankfulness and their recognition of the source of all the good things that were being provided their lack of these things really created a litany of difficulties that came from their repeated separation from God, all because of their own free will that they took advantage of. Now, we know that we're blessed beyond measure, don't we? We've heard that said many times, not just from a pulpit, but in our own conversations. We recognize that we, maybe above most all nations, are greatly blessed. We've heard that so many times that it doesn't really register with us. More appropriately than the nation in which we live is the family of who of which we are members. There is no human on this earth that is blessed more than we are because we are the family of the sovereign Lord that, that David spoke about so, so beautifully throughout his life. There's an application that I need to take from this, and perhaps you do as well. And that is, if we will 
nurture an attitude of consistently not just remembering the Lord as being the source of every good thing that we enjoy, but spend time thanking Him. When we are on top of the world, sometimes we have those wonderful feelings. It seems like everything in our in our life for that day or those days, that week, is just going beautifully. And it's easy to get caught up in the revelry of that and take our eyes off the, off the one who has provided this to us in the first place. If we will nurture an idea of giving God respect and the thanks he deserves when times are great, that will program our minds, program our hearts, to also be having an attitude of thankness when the, the world is dark and difficulties have come into our life. And we, so I can look in this audience, I can see some people who have come through some very, very difficult and dark times in their lives. And I appreciate the fact that they are here, faithful Christians, and that they're an encouragement to, to me and I think to the rest of us. We are not going to be automatic, humble thanksgivers if we do not nurture, make it a habit of thanking and recognizing God in the times when they're good. Thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate it seeing everybody. We hope that you have a wonderful day of Thanksgiving tomorrow with your families. We look forward to seeing everybody again on the first day of the week. And as we close our service this evening, let's bow in one more prayer. Our Father, we thank you so much for this day. The blessings that you have given us, you have been so rich in your grace to us and lavish in the way you have blessed us in our lives, especially spiritually. And Father, we thank you so much for the way that you continue to be with us every step of the way in our lives. Regardless of what the skies may look around us, we know, Father, through faith and through your actions and your track record, that you indeed are next to us, that you are in us every second of our lives. We thank you, Father, for your grace that accomplishes that. And as we leave this place, Father, we pray that you would perhaps renew our spirit of thankfulness and to recognize you as our sovereign God, the one who gives us all good things and to constantly praise you for those. And, Father, to recognize that when days become difficult, as you have told us they would be, help us, Father, to have that, that sense in our heart to, to consistently thank you for the spiritual blessings that we are still receiving in those moments regardless of the circumstances. Thank you, Father, for your Son. And it's through his name that we offer all of these things in accordance with your perfect will. Amen.